would be a fair point of like establishing what free will is. I'll give you a definition. You can tell me if you disagree. So I think free will is the ability to choose differently. So if I was to go back in time, I had an infinite amount of choices that I probably couldn't have joined this live or shouldn't have joined this live, but I could have done something else. Would you agree to that definition? Uh, I mean, yeah, but if that's true, then uh, then a co then a coin has free will because it could land heads or tails. Uh, I wouldn't say that, like, uh, I don't know how I would say that, like, oh, wait, can you explain that again? So a coin could land heads or tails, but that doesn't, that doesn't grant that it has free will. Free will is, is not defined by potential. Okay, so then how would you define free will? Well, free will is, <clears throat> is like the idea that your actions are not dictated by any prior states or or mere physical causation like deterministic physical causation all right yeah the, we can go on the, we can go on the biggest issue the biggest issue i feel like there is for the advocates of free will is they have absolutely no material explanation for what it is they just claim that it exists like i try to ask them what is it what, what is free will or what makes it possible and there's never an explanation they just say oh no no yeah we 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 freely choose things it's like okay well what evidence do we have that we do it and how does it work there's never it's like whatever we can go in whatever direction you want but that's just kind of i guess for starters yeah so we can go under that definition and then just to clarify your stance you would be a hard determinist correct uh, I don't necessarily believe in hard determinism, but that doesn't mean that free will, that doesn't leave room exactly for free will. Wait, no, what would you define yourself as? Because if you were soft determinism, you would have to acknowledge some truth of free will. No, I wouldn't have to determine free, just because something can't be determined doesn't mean that it's, uh, that it, that it's free. I mean, there are fundamentally random processes that occur, uh, but those processes don't occur because whatever's going on has free will. I mean, those are like literally just physical, uh, like the decay of, of radioactive atoms. Like you can't predict which ones will, but nobody would say that the nuclei of atoms have free will. All right. Yeah. So I came up here with like the understanding that you would be like a hard determinism and then I would just prove hard determinism to be false. But it seems like you already agree that hard determinism is false in some instances. Yeah, it may not necessarily, I'm not married to the idea of it. I mean, I don't know what your argument was. You, you can make it the, the uh, Nobel prize in physics last year or whatever that was for the Bell inequality theorems. Those seem to, if you subscribe to a particular view of quantum mechanics, those seem to say that, yes, there are forces that are fundamentally like unpredictable or like unknowable out in the future or whatever. Yeah, so that was my intention, but we can go down the free will route. And this is just going to be like uh, like most saturated argument for it, that if we don't have free will, then we can't hold people morally cultable for actions. That yeah, but that's not an argument as to whether or not free will exists. Uh yeah, I would say for us to hold moral cultability, somebody has to have free will, or we can't hold them morally cultable. Um, I I don't understand how somebody can be responsible for something. <clears throat> and do not hold them responsible for it. Well, that was kind of, that was kind of dumb. I mean, if somebody's responsible for an action, so like, for example, like somebody who's like, I don't know, a, a severely deranged criminal. Um, and they're just like, simply, they just simply are too dangerous to be, you know, amongst normal people for whatever reason, a, a, for, because it's, a, a structural thing in their brain or a chemical thing, which I guess would kind of be a structural thing or whatever, then I'm, I, I don't see how there's any problem with setting up a system that doesn't allow them to be, uh, to be put in situations where they cause harm. What I think you're actually describing is, well, it wouldn't make sense for us to have a, a judicial system 
that is predicated on revenge, which that's what most people's idea of what justice should be, revenge, which is just kind of gross to me, honestly. <clears throat> Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I wouldn't go down the judicial path or go down like the moral path. So if we had that deranged person, I would ask you, how could we ever say that they did something immoral or we hold them to like some moral responsibility for their actions if they had no control of their you actions? You don't have to put a value judgment on it. We can judge, did the person do something that caused harm to another person? We don't, we don't have to put a value judgment on it to say whether or not that is the case all right but if they commit this crime right and we don't prescribe some like value to it would you say or like hold them like morally or legally responsible for the action what what about it okay so like i i, I don't know how to, to go about it another way like like usually i pull up like sleepwalking if somebody's sleepwalking and they pull out like a pew pew and they pew pew somebody that is also sleeping could we ever hold them morally responsible i would say probably not because they didn't have free will in that situation to actually commit that act like they didn't have any form of agency would you disagree with that uh no i wouldn't disagree with that so like my solution for that would be like <clears throat> Could it, could you say that there's like, is there a, again, it doesn't really have to be moral, although we have emotional attachments to these types of events. We could just look at it from like a logical perspective. <clears throat> um, could you logically make the case that they um, committed manslaughter, for example? Like you could prove an element of recklessness. Has this person done this type of thing uh, before? And despite that, did they keep like loaded guns just sitting around in their house, then you would have a, a case for wrongful death. Uh, in terms of, <clears throat> in terms of, it's like you could look at it from that lens. Uh, what, what I think and this is kind of a, <clears throat> this isn't really a, a super common thing, but for instances like that, I think uh, involving the families of the person who is harmed in the decision and being like, what do you think should be done? Uh, I think we should do that for things like that, because if they say, look, we understand that what happened was this horrible freak accident and we're not interested in because, again, the justice, a, a justice system should not be predicated solely on revenge, right? It should be predicated on like what actually makes good logical sense, if you ask me. So anyways. Yeah, so I wouldn't disagree with the judicial point of view. <clears throat> That like, even if somebody didn't have like free will or like agency at the time of committing X action, they should still suffer Y consequence because they're a danger to society, right? I think pe that's why we lock yeah. people up in prison because they pose a threat to society. So that's why I propose morally, should we hold them responsible, right? Because obviously legally, of course we would, because they're a danger to society, it's just given. But when we speak specifically about morality, it doesn't seem like we could hold people morally responsible for an action if they didn't have free will. But I mean, they can be responsible for having done it. Like there are good and bad reasons. Well, there actually are really only uh, bad reasons. What, or I should actually say there are good reasons why you shouldn't build your house next to a cliff, make a cliff of, uh, soft sediment. There are very good reasons. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that erosion purposely harmed you. It's just that you can it's pretty easy to to understand that like, yeah, there are forces at play here, which are going to cause harm or, or not good, not good outcomes. And I think we can adopt that same attitude toward people and hold people responsible for what they did. Uh, even if they don't have free will, because in the end, they did it. All right. Would would you say like this is universally true? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that means. So like, would you apply this to like every scenario possible? Well, I think that would be the only way that it makes sense. 
yeah, I just need clarification. So if we had like, I don't know, let's say we had a child and this child just like, I don't know, turned the stove on or oven on accidentally and burned down the house. Would you hold them morally responsible for that action if somebody was unalive in that accident? I I don't think that you could, how do I say this? Um, you could acknowledge that they are, but I, I wouldn't send a child to prison. Like, even people that believe in free will don't think that that really makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, w I don't, I wouldn't argue that we should send them to prison. What I'm just arguing is, do we hold them morally responsible because they're like, they lack ignorance and they also lack agency? Yeah. So would you agree that we wouldn't hold them morally responsible? We wouldn't say they did an immoral act? Um, I, I guess. <clears throat> okay. So would you not like see there's a logical inconsistency with the logic you proposed? No. I well, I asked you if it would be universally true and I just showed you an instance where it wouldn't be true. But you asked me, it, would this be, I, what? You didn't ask me, <clears throat> I, I'm so confused. You, when you asked me, would this universally apply? I thought we were just talking about the logic behind uh, whether or not somebody can be responsible for what they did, uh, even if they don't have free will. I haven't, I haven't contradicted that stance. Yeah, so when I said, when we said responsibility, we know that we are, like, I'm in reference to moral responsibility, right? Sure. Like, I, I don't think the kid premeditatedly burned the house down in order to cause harm. That doesn't mean that they are responsible in the sense that they did it. <clears throat> so to, so just to like understand your point, you would hold somebody morally culpable if they know what they're doing? That would be a big part of it. Yeah, that's the difference between the sleepwalker and the person that just does it <laughs> of their of their own volition. All right. So if we had somebody that, well, I already proposed the analogy of the child burning down the house, you said we wouldn't hold them to like a moral degree. So like, I don't know how else to explain it. So I, I think even the most heinous act done by somebody is still a, a uh, product of mere circumstance. If you lived the exact same life that the worst person who ever lived did, you still would have done what they did, right? Um, <clears throat> now, that doesn't mean, like, it, it seems like you're asking me, well, I'm not sure what you're asking me, because at the end of the day, I still think that uh, people, we should have a, like a, a, I think that prisons can exist. I, I don't see anything wrong with it, even if people uh, still don't have free will, because people are still responsible for what they do. I mean, we, we protect ourselves against the elements which don't have free will for logical reasons. Although back in the day, people thought that uh, people thought that nature was at the will of some some agent or god or whatever that does have agency, and so they they didn't really actually engage in as much uh, risk aversion as they should have. They just said, "Well, I'm a righteous person, so nothing bad's going to happen to me," right? Yeah, and I think we agree on the prison part. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, we already agreed that like we would hold these people accountable legally because they pose a threat to society, even if yep. they choose <clears throat> not to do it or they chose to do it, right? Yeah. So then the reason why I proposed the child analogy is to show that, hey, we wouldn't really hold a child morally responsible for action. And this is because they lack agency. The same way that we wouldn't hold somebody else responsible or like somebody grown because they lack some free will. Um, I think the, sure, but what would be the point of throwing the child in prison? What would be the point of it? Uh, I wouldn't really argue there's a point in throwing the child, right? 
I wouldn't say that we would legally hold this child responsible because their like prefrontal cortex is still developing and they can't make like rational decisions. So all their decisions are based off emotions. We shouldn't really hold them capable for that, right? But what I'm talking about is moral uh, capability, right? Will we hold them culpable morally and say they are like an immoral being because they did set action, even though they lack a moral agency and compass? Okay, so what i think has happened here is you're you're saying to me well if peterson if you hold that position then you think that the kids should be thrown in jail too because they did harm but they weren't responsible for it but that's completely ignoring what the purpose of having like a a, a judicial system or whatever you call the next steps like not necessarily a prison system or or whatever that's completely ignoring what the purpose of that is the reason we wouldn't throw the child in jail is because it would be utterly purposeless, right? Because they didn't arrive, they didn't find themselves in that situation because of something that we necessarily need to like rehabilitate in them. Now, I guess I like, like they're a dumb kid and they need to learn a lesson, but prison, like that being in prison or jail would be a completely stupid uh, system to try to teach kids don't play with the stove. Would a prisoner jail is a prisoner jail a a valid uh, a valid mechanism for dealing with violent criminals who have propensities for what do you call it recidivism or whatever? Well, yes. I mean, some people have a have a fucked up view of like prison should basically be be almost like torture or slavery, throw them in solitary confinement for eighteen hours a day, so on and so forth. Uh, I don't think that it needs to be that because again, it's not about revenge for me, but yeah, for the person that is doing like real arson, um, then yeah, the prison system actually serves a function. It's not just about, well, if X happens, then Y needs to happen. Yeah. And I would completely agree with that. I'm not in favor or like, arguing that children should be put in jails i'm just pointing out that hey we really wouldn't hold this child morally responsible because they didn't have like uh i don't know like free will or freedom of choice in scenarios same way that if determinism is true or there is no free will then we couldn't hold somebody like morally cultable for committing manslaughter or something on those lines because they didn't choose to do it the same way the child didn't choose to burn down the house and unalive somebody in the fire <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think animals premeditatively murder any humans, but they do kill humans. And so there are things we should do, like y you should shoot and kill a bear if it's, if it's charging toward you, even though it's not really its fault. That's just kind of the only rational action to take. <clears throat> Would you apply that to other scenarios? What, like people? Yeah, so if a child was chasing you with a poker, would you say you have a moral like right to pew pew them in the head? It's, it's, no, because like with the bear, uh, the the killing, shooting the bear and killing it is really about the only way you're walking away from that. Whereas a child is like, yeah, so obviously there's no uh, reason why doing that would be necessary way that presupposes that in one scenario there is no alternatives while the other one has alternatives right so if we were to go down the route where we just have like a single hallway and then we have a dead end at the end of the hallway and the kid is chasing you with a poker so you could either pew pew the kid or get poked to death by the kid do you think there's a moral like right i'd, I'd falcon them? kick them in the head because they're a kid and i'm an adult they and would wait, they would sir they would survive that Wait, you think a child would survive a kick to the head? A falcon kick? Yeah, I'm not a martial artist. Okay, let's say that it does unalive the kid. Do you think that you would be more like in an immoral state? Uh, potentially, yeah. Okay, so then what was the point of arguing? Bro, dude, you, you have to know that I said falcon kick because it's funny. Okay, <laughs> like there's, there's no scenario where I'm in a, where I'm in a, um, uh, a, t a tiny corridor and some kid has a stick and my, oh my <laughs> and in order for me to get out of there, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to kill them. That just, that just doesn't make any sense.
And there probably isn't a scenario where you're being chased by a bear and you can't climb a tree. Unless it's That's one of the bear. worst things you can do. Bears are yeah. phenomenal climbers. Unless it's a black bear, right? There's probably a different scenario you can do that black, doesn't involve... Black bear you should try to scare away. We're learning a life life saving tips here on Planet Peterson. Yup, black bear. I don't know what you do. I think you fight them. Brown bear, you stay down. White bear, you're dead. And there you go. Pol Life. Polar bear. Um, yeah, polar bear. You're probably totally screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> falcon they... kick the black bear. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, oh, I saw that in the comment section. Yeah. Wait, wait. That's a good point. Why can't you falcon kick the bear? Because it wouldn't do any good. Oh, why not? Bear, 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 the bear is mighty. The bear is mightier than the child. I think that's a, I think Confucius once said that. Also, if you stand on toilet, you are high on pot. Okay, buddy. I, I didn't know he was getting philosophical. Don't know what philosophy. What? We're talking about, that. we're talking about the implications for whether or not free will is true. This is super philosophical. I like, if you want to read an interesting book about this, I just read one. It's called, uh, Determined, right? Yeah, by Robert Sapolsky. He's a neuroscientist. It's really good. And he goes over all this stuff. I don't remember 100% what he says, but. Um, yeah, I'll check it out. Uh, I'm not, I don't particularly believe in free will, but I, I'd be more on the soft determinism part. Yeah, sure. And you know, <clears throat> like, it, it's, it's, it's not even all that hard for like people in my position for you to like nitpick my positions on things and find like sort of like what seem like contradictions, but we all have loose associations with, with the words we use, but we also like believe in things that we know aren't true. And that might sound absurd and illogical, but we all do it. Like, for example, um, money, money isn't worth anything. Like the idea that if I just, if, if I, if we contacted some like, I don't know, a group of people living on an island that had never been contacted by like the developed world or whatever, and somehow like we could talk to them. And I, I pulled out a $100 bill and I told them, well, this, this thing right here represents, this is the exact same thing as me spending five hours digging a hole and somebody's appreciation for me doing that task. That's what this represents. They would probably be like, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Cause it is kind of dumb. Um, in fact, virtually all of the money I have, I have five actual dollars. All of the rest of my, the actual money I have exists as electrons buzzing around on the internet. How does that make any sense? And that somehow represents uh, the fact that I have a career. So these are like money literally isn't worth anything. We all just pretend that it is. So to me, that's the example I always use where it's like, well, you, you can be a hypocrite and still be logical because it's about whether or not the system works in a particular way that we've all agreed to. So, and Well, do you think anything has inherent value or values only like prescribed based off society? Um, I think it's probably the second one. I mean, there are things that are objectively true. Uh, but like in terms of like value, that's, I mean, I don't know, d d saying that the earth is heavier than the moon is, it, I don't think that's the kind of value thing that you mean, but, uh, no, I think that's probably always going to be subjective, but there are universal, um, subjectivities that as a species, we all hold yeah, so for so people that have psychosis, but then again, that's like describable. Yeah, so when I say value, um, don't really know how to define it. It wouldn't be necessarily monetary, but like moral, okay, moral value or- Yeah, or yeah I know, monetary. I know what you meant. Yeah, so do you think that that is only prescribed through society's view or there's like inherent value in things? Um, a lot of it is prescribed, but a lot of it is like, like for example, um, I, I promise you right now that some kid somewhere in the world just died. Do you care? Because I don't. Yeah, I don't. Right. But if you had a child and it died, you would care a lot. Uh, this is like literally mathematically uh, describable in terms of 
the actual genetic relatedness you have towards somebody. Like we literally, it, it's, it, it, it jives with the genetics. You care less if a cousin dies versus a sibling because you're less related to them. You care less when, but uh, I don't know, uh, uh, well, I mean, all the examples are going to be kind of like that. Like a parent cares less when one of their nephews dies. It's just such a horrible thing to say, but they care less about that than if their own child dies for the same kind of reason. Um, if you look into the genetics of bees and how a hive works, it's it actually kind of flies in the face of natural selection at first until you realize that all the females in the colony are three fourths genetically identical instead of the normal 50%. And that's why they will fight to the death to preserve the colony, even though they don't actually have any children. The queen has all the children because they're more related to their sisters than they would be to their children. So there are ways in which this is like literally biologically ingrained in us. A lot of the value judgments, because <clears throat> a lot of this is going to have to do with like what happens to members of our species right in terms of like fairness in terms of harm and all, all those kinds of things but then a lot of it is subjective like why should <clears throat> why should uh <clears throat> why shouldn't we tax 99 percent of the wealth of billionaires there's no reason a billionaire needs to exist while people are starving to death i'm not actually making that argument <laughs> but it is an argument right um so that's a that's a value thing so when you brought up the the mother and the child and how like there's some like biological value, would you say that this is sentimental value, moral value, or like a different type of value? Well, I mean, it's literally true. And I would say that you have a like a biological imperative. So the reason we experience emotions um, it is because of that. So I, I think that they're basically almost inseparably intertwined in a way yeah i i just don't know how like i would describe like uh, i don't know the metric of value of like what system of value that would be because that sounds like sentimental value but if we look at other species like bees well bees don't really feel sentimental or they don't feel like feelings of that sort at all right so then would it just be like a biological value well, I mean, they can't express it in the same way, but uh, the you can describe their actions in the same way you can describe our actions from the standpoint of selfish genes. I'm actually almost finished with a book about animal minds. That's really cool. If you're into that kind of thing, it's called Metazoa by Peter Godfrey Smith. So, oh, you are. He so he actually talks about do in the the most recent part I read was. What kind of other animals have like an actual experiential, um, I don't have a word, have an experience of like pain, for example. Are insects actually capable of feeling something like pain? And there's actually some cool research that suggests that they actually can, so. Okay, so if you have knowledge in that, can I inquire you about something I wanted to know? Oh, sorry, say that again. Yeah, so uh if you have knowledge on like the animal brain and how it functions of that sort can i inquire you about a question i mean i'll do my best all right so this is a question i've actually been trying to look into and get an answer it's a pretty simple one but it's like very complex can animals experience or perceive beauty oh interesting um i have I have no idea. I mean, like at the end of the day, what you could do it like a animals obviously have uh, not not all animals, but sexual selection exists in animals. Do you know what I mean by that? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Right. So like a, a female, a pea hen will pick out the most beautiful peacock. Right now, do they actually understand that? Well, we can't really say, but it, it doesn't really seem like they do. Maybe they're just following these, like, whatever, um, <clears throat> biological drives that they have. So it, it does appear, like, I could argue that we do the exact same thing as somebody that doesn't believe in free will. I mean, like, 
we say words and we have ideas, but at the end of the day, we're just doing what we're, what we're basically programmed almost in a way to do. But like, I don't know, we talk about these things, but does that mean that they're real and that they, that they actually exist and that what we're doing is fundamentally different than animals? I don't know. It, it certainly seems much more complex, but, um, so I guess I would say, I don't know. They do exactly what an animal that has a sense of beauty would do, but I feel like we can't answer the question because we can't talk to them and ask questions and we have no idea if they think like we do. Yeah. So then that's why I asked, because you know about the brain, because maybe there's something in the brain that allows us to perceive beauty and comprehend beauty and we could just see if they have that part of the brain developed at such a rate or like they have the neuron capability to experience and understand those things so if you don't know then yeah. bro I, I don't know yeah that would be really interesting i just don't i have absolutely no idea how you would biologically determine what the opinion of an animal is but at the same time, they have done studies where <clears throat> um, in in The Blind Watchmaker by Richard Dawkins, he talks about this. There's like birds that uh, th where the males don't have like crazy long tail feathers, but it appears to be a trait where the males with the, the biggest, longest tail feathers are the most successful at breeding. So they literally took birds and they would they would capture them and they would clip their tails or they would give them they would like put feathers together to give them like absurdly long tails that don't actually really, that would basically be impossible. Like they don't actually exist, you know, um, to try to see what were the, what were the results of the breeding? And it's, it's cool. It's complex. They find that, yeah, the females actually literally do choose the males with the, the longer tail feathers. Um, so they are selecting based on those, types of criteria. So does that mean that they actually have opinions? Well, I don't know. Because are they are, are they actual rational actors? Do they have metacognition? That's probably what we need to know. And I think some animals definitely do like chimpanzees, I think it's actually quite obvious. But others, I don't know. It's a very, very interesting question, though. All right. Um, I'm sure you have other people in the guest box. I, I don't want to take up most of your time, but I very appreciate the discussion. I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot and have a good night. Have a good stream. Thanks. You too.